this is a uh, these are some new beds so they're not terribly rich yet I haven't had a chance much to give it much fertilizer so I like to give uh, plant some beans around my, these other plants uh, beans are a leguminous plant which is to say that they have a symbiotic relationship with uh, bacteria that live in the ground um, and uh, together they create uh, nitrogen, soluble nitrogen that uh, fertilizes the soil. So uh, another one of my methods where I use nature to uh, help me do my gardening. Nature's had millions and millions and millions of years to perfect all of these methods and she's proven capable of maintaining fertility and uh, rich soil for millennia. So I'm not going to argue with nature, work along with her and together you know in a fun little partnership you know we both come ahead right since we're talking about nitrogen fixing plants beans and peas and other such plants as those uh, one good example here is the alder it's a tree that grows profusely this is a young one i'm going to attempt to rip it up and show you the nitrogen fixing nodules Hold on just a quick second here. There you go. See all of those nodules here? All of these bundles on the roots? That's not actually part of the root structure, but a symbiotic relationship with soil bone bacteria that together with the roots team up to convert nitrogen from the air into a soluble form that the plants can use. Um, the tree exchanges sugars with the bacteria in exchange for the nitrogen production and together they uh, create fertility for the tree and for the rest of the soil around the tree. Now a lot of people hate alders and they rip them up, they try to destroy them and kill them and if you let them go they will take over our wood, especially uh, in a riparian zone around uh, streams and stuff. But uh, if you control them with regular cutting, see as you cut a branch or cut, cut part of the tree, some of these roots will die. And then these nodules are set free in the soil to create fertility. Now, same goes with beans and peas and other such things. They make these types of nodules and uh, help with the fertility of the soil. So, instead of fighting this, I'm encouraging this. I let the alders grow in my property and uh, control them, cut them, you know, they're, they're useful. I like to use them to make fencing. Uh, wattle fences, for instance, are, are uh, you know, uh, alders are really good for that. Part of a, a trail, and wherever I cut the alders, the rest of the trees just shot up immediately because the uh, roots uh, let go of their nitrogen nodules and fertilized everything else for the rest of the trees. All right, so I just grabbed myself a handful of beans. Pocket these. Uh, I try to not plant them too close to the leeks that I've already planted there. I don't mind the uh, roots mixing a little bit, but I don't want them to encroach on each other too much. Kind of like onions. You stick a hole, stick a bean in it. Make a hole. Stick a bean in it. Stick a hole, put a bean in it. Anywhere. Anywhere at all. Now, I know it's traditional to put everything in straight rows, but uh, nature doesn't do straight rows. So, if I want to imitate nature in my gardening, why would I want to use straight rows? Nature knows what she's doing. Who am I to argue, right? The nice part about these raised beds is the fact that uh, they're so high up and the plants start to grow from there when you're standing in the walkway. You don't have to stoop so much. When you harvest here, it's not you're not bent over in half like you are growing in the flat ground. 